Hey, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel, and today I'm gonna be doing another thriller recommendation video! And I'm so excited because it's been about eight months since I've last done a thriller recommendation video. I have been reading a lot of thrillers, but I haven't been reading very many good thrillers, okay? But I'm here to let you know about the good thrillers that I've been reading over these last eight months. Before we do jump into the thriller books, I wanted to say a huge thank you to today's video sponsor, which is HelloFresh. I'm just so excited to be working with HelloFresh. Like, you have no idea. I just love this company so freaking much. With HelloFresh, you can treat yourself to some premium picks because they have top of the line recipes that are changing every single week. HelloFresh recipes feature produce that go straight from the farm to your door in under a week so that you're guaranteed to get the freshest flavors possible. With HelloFresh, they make it so easy because they send you step-by-step -step instructions on how to make everything, which, you know, for somebody like me who doesn't cook very often, I can get easily overwhelmed with the idea of trying to make something new. But HelloFresh literally makes it so easy. They even include the photos. They include step-by-step -step directions. And something I love about HelloFresh too is that they send you exactly enough product that you need to make the food so that you're cutting out a bunch of waste. Like, you don't throw anything out, which is so nice because, you know, sometimes when you're grocery shopping on your own, you can buy too much of something or you, or you buy an ingredient that you only use one time in a recipe and then the rest of it goes to waste But I like that with HelloFresh every single item that you used is completely used And so you're not throwing out any food and if you're curious HelloFresh does offer veggie pescatarian and fit and wholesome meals to make it easy to stick to your goals I also love that HelloFresh cares about sustainability because they're the first carbon neutral meal kit company And nearly all of their packaging is recyclable and I also love that it's 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant. What the heck? This afternoon for lunch, I decided to make the balsamic tomato and herb chicken over buttery garlic spaghetti. And I ended up making this all by myself. You know, once again, I get kind of nervous when I'm making a new thing by myself for the first time, but this was actually so easy. And like, as someone who doesn't cook super often, I found it to be so easy to make this. And I've never considered before baking mozzarella over chicken before it goes into the oven, but this was life-changing. This was a game changer for me. And yeah, I ended up eating this with my mom, my sister's boyfriend also ate some because he thought it was so freaking good and we were just all really impressed by how delicious this was and everything tasted so fresh and I love the balsamic oh my god it was so good go to hellofresh.com and use my code Gabby reads 16 for 16 free meals and three surprise gifts who doesn't love surprise gifts uh, once again that is hellofresh.com use my code Gabby reads 16 and get 16 free meals and three surprise gifts you heard that right 16 free meals that's a lot of free food thank you so much once again to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video and now let's get into the thriller books. All right, so the first thriller that I have to recommend to you is actually a book troop pick. I know, isn't that crazy? Like I've actually picked a few good books this year, who thought? So the first one's going to be The Paris Apartment by Lucy Folly. I know that this book isn't for everyone and that a lot of people actually really didn't like this, but I had so much fun with this book and I feel like if you're a fan of Lucy Folly's other books like The Guest List, you know, I think this would be a winner for you possibly. So this book we're following this woman named Jess who she wants to go and visit her brother in Paris and then when she goes to his apartment in Paris he's not there and he's gone missing and everybody that's at this like Paris apartment like that lives in the building is kind of weird and they all kind of know about Ben and it's interesting because we get a lot of different points of views of all the people who are living in this Paris apartment and they all are like everything changed when Ben came here and none of them seem to really like Ben so you're kind of like what the heck like it seems like they all have a motive for why he could have gone missing and I just thought this book was so much fun you know it was just so intense like it definitely had some slower moments but I also feel like this book gets a lot darker than you might be expecting it to but in a way that's like really interesting I don't know I really enjoyed like the last third of this book I thought the action really picked up I was just really invested in the mystery and if you are interested on more of my thoughts and a discussion on this book me and my friend Lexi did do a full live show for the book troop so I'll have that linked down below if you want to check that out another book troop thriller that I would recommend is actually one from November last Last year because I haven't gotten the chance to recommend it in a thriller Rex video yet, but it's False Witness by Karen Slaughter. This was our book troop pick in November last year, and this was so freaking good. So in this book, we're following these two sisters who have had a pretty rough childhood in a pretty rough life. One of them is actually a defense attorney at a prestigious law firm in Atlanta, and she gets assigned to this case. That's kind of like one of those situations where she doesn't really want to do it, but she doesn't have any choice because she's going to have to defend this guy who is on trial 
for raping a bunch of different women. And when she meets this guy face to face that she's gonna be representing, she has a feeling that there's a reason why he chose her. And then it starts to connect to her past and to their childhood. And this book is just really intense. I love the sister relationship in this book. And I would say that, you know, this book is pretty graphic and pretty gory, at least on Karen Slaughter. You know, when you go into a Karen Slaughter book, you've just got to expect for it to be pretty dark and disturbing and kind of violent. But I would say that I don't think this book is as violent and disturbing as some of Karen Slaughter's other books. Like I would say Pretty Girls and The Good Daughter are so much more, you know, visually disturbing and descriptive. Where as this one wasn't too bad, but I still think this was a really tough read. And me and my friend Haley did a live show for this that I will have linked down below if you want to hear more of our thoughts. Next thriller is kind of more of like a lighthearted fun thriller because it's Good Rich People by Eliza Jane Brazier and this one was so unexpected. Like I went into this book not even sure if I was gonna like it, okay? Because with this book, the last author's book that they've published, I gave that one two stars and so this one I was like I don't know what to expect and I just had the most fun with this one. Like if if you are a fan of like rich people murder vibes, then like this is the book for you. So in this book, we follow this, you know, little group of rich people. There's this wife named Lila who kind of married into this rich family. And this rich family, they have this house and then they have this little guest house that they like rent out to different tenants. And they kind of play this game where one of the people in the rich family has to try to ruin the life of whoever just moved into that tenant's house right there in the guest house. And so we follow as Lila, it's like her turn to like ruin this girl's life that just moved into this guest house. And this book, it's just wild. It's like all the characters are super unlikable, but just absolutely fascinating. And this definitely screams with like eat the rich and like fuck the rich energy, but like in the best way, like it's just so good. And there's like a twist, like almost halfway through this book that you're like, wait a second, what? And I don't know. I just thought it was really fun. Yes, it's a little over the top. Yes, some people would probably think this is kind of cringy and just hate the characters, but I personally had so much fun. And I think if you kind of like the, you know, rich people murder drama vibe, I think you might like this one. The next one is gonna be Insomnia by Sarah Pinborough. This is another one that I went into it not really sure if I was gonna like it because as of this point I've only enjoyed one book from Sarah Pinborough and that was Behind Her Eyes and so I went into this one kind of like nervous and not really sure if it was gonna be my thing but Insomnia was such a surprise. I thought this book was so great. I will warn you that it starts off incredibly slow like I almost considered DNFing this a few times at the beginning because I was like when will this pick up? But this book is essentially we're following this woman who, you know, she's getting close to turning 40 soon, but she's nervous about it because when her mom turned 40, she lost her mind and she never slept again. And now she's nervous because she's dealing with all of these insomnia issues. Like as she gets nearer and nearer to her 40th birthday, she's like having more and more trouble sleeping. And she's afraid that by the time she turns 40, she's going to be in like the same situation where she's going to lose her mind and never sleep again. And this book is just really fascinating because there's so much more happening under the surface than you might think. I really liked, um, you know, this protagonist. She's kind of like an unreliable narrator in her own way. And it's like, you don't know who to trust in this book. I think she has really unique and interesting relationships with not only her husband, but her two kids in this book. Like they have really toxic kind of interesting relationships happening. And I don't know, I just thought this book was wild. And like the ending, you know, Sarah Pinborough is kind of known at this point for these kind of ridiculous, like out their endings and I feel like this book is no exception. Like I will admit I ended up giving this one four stars instead of five stars because I wasn't a huge fan of one of the plot twists at the end. I thought it was really obvious but then there's also this aspect to the ending that is just absolutely bizarre and wild and I kind of loved that. So yeah I thought this book was a good time. I thought it was totally worth recommending this thriller. And then recently I also read Hidden Pictures. This one actually just went on sale in May and this one was another surprise. I really enjoyed this. We're following this character named Mallory who is fresh out of rehab. She's in recovery and she takes this job babysitting this little boy named Teddy for this kind of, you know, rich family. They're not like super rich, but they're pretty like well off, you know? And then Teddy starts drawing all these like creepy ass drawings of like his imaginary friend and like he keeps talking to his imaginary friend and you know, it's just creepy. This honestly reads a little bit like a horror book, you know? At times it can feel very horror-ish. So if you're a horror fan who also really enjoys thrillers, definitely would recommend this one. I also think it's really awesome because there are actual like 
drawings included in this copy so it's actually really cool to read this physically because there's so many drawings included throughout the book so it's it just adds to the experience of reading this the ending of this book is totally wild and i still don't even know how i fully like think about it i haven't had time to fully process this but i just thought this book was so crazy and so good and if you love that trope of like a kid drawing some spooky ass shit like i do then i think you would love this <laughs> another thriller that i read at the end of last year that i really enjoyed is The Collective and this one is actually a thriller that's kind of about this like online group of moms who become hitmen. So we follow this woman named Camille who's a grieving and angry mother who five years after her daughter's death is still obsessed with the privileged young man she believes to be responsible. She kind of like makes a scene at this guy's like ceremony like they have this whole ceremony where they're like honoring this man. She kind of like makes a scene like you know screaming like you killed my daughter and like fuck you whatever and then this woman comes up to her and hands her this card and is like here you go and when she looks at the card she realizes it's this card for this like online forum and she eventually discovers that this online forum is for mothers who have lost their children you know for for things like murder like people took their children away from them and it's basically like they can anonymously hire each other as hitmen to kill the people that killed their own children it's fucking wild it's crazy and it's so wild and so good but i also will warn you that this book is pretty sad you know it's pretty heavy you know because we're dealing with a lot of grief you know these people these parents are dealing with a lot of grief of like losing their children so like there's a lot of heavy subject matter in this and a lot of heavy themed topics and discussions and dialogue but i also thought it was really good like it was action-packed it was interesting i was very interested in learning more about like the collective and how it operates and how it works and i just thought it was so good like i think this one is super underrated right now like i don't see anybody talking about this and i'm not sure why the next thriller wreck is actually gonna be the maid by nita prose and this one is kind of more on the side of like cozy mystery thriller than like thriller thriller you know it just depends on what you're used to i guess with reading thrillers but i actually think that this would be a really good book to start with if you're just trying to get into thrillers and you're maybe like not sure if you can handle anything too intense i think this book is just cozy enough that you would probably enjoy this as a first thriller reading experience but in this book we're following this character named molly gray who is probably one of the best thriller characters that I've ever read like she is just fantastic and she really makes this book and she is this maid at this really like you know fancy prestigious hotel and she goes into this room and finds a dead body and then she starts getting questioned by the police and the detectives like they think she might have had something or she they think she knows more than she's telling them about like how she discovered the body or they think she might have been involved this book feels very um you know finley donovan is killing it kind of energy so it kind of has that same like cozy mystery feel that finley donovan has so i feel like if you really loved finley donovan i would highly recommend this one i also did do an entire live show with my friend savannah over for her book club we actually read this for her book club in january and so me and savannah did an entire live show discussing this book over on her channel so i'll have that linked down below if you want to check that out another thriller that i just read for another friend's book club recently that i really enjoyed is all her little secrets by wanda m morris and this is one that i read for kayla's book club her book club's the literally dead book club and i just did a live show on her channel for this book in april so i'll have that link down below if you want to see that this one is about this woman who is a corporate attorney in Atlanta, Georgia, which I just realized is like almost the same job as this girl. Yeah, this girl's a defense attorney in Atlanta, and then this girl's a corporate attorney in Atlanta. What? What? Anyways, just realized that. Not important, moving on. So this woman that's working in this Atlanta office, she is the only black woman working in this office and all of her coworkers are white. And she's actually sleeping with her white boss. And then one morning she walks into her boss's office and he is dead on the table and she kind of like freaks out and just leaves and like doesn't tell anybody doesn't say anything doesn't do anything acts like never happened she's gone and then she starts to realize like this company might be like hiding something or something's going on with this company you know like there's all kinds of dark secrets there's all kinds of things going on she doesn't know who to trust and the police are getting suspicious of her and things are going on it's just a really intense book and in this book we get two different points of views we get like one that's like a present day point of view and then every other chapter we get flashbacks to like the 1970s and you're trying to figure out for a while like how the two point of views connect and then they do end up connecting in a really interesting way. I would especially recommend this though to people that like you know reading about attorneys as the main character because I will admit some of the lawyer talk 
went like a little over my head like sometimes I was a little lost and the flashback chapters sometimes they dragged just a little bit for me like those are my only major complaints with this book but otherwise I think it was a really great thriller and I definitely think it's worth checking out. Next one that I want to recommend is The Good Son and this one is actually one of the books that I read when I did my reading vlog for like reading Korean thriller and horror books and this is a Korean author and we follow this young man who's about like 26 or 27 years old and he goes downstairs one day and his mom is like brutally murdered like dead there's blood everywhere and he's freaking out because he doesn't remember what happened the night before because he suffers from these seizures where he'll have a seizure and then he'll black out for a long time and he doesn't remember what happened the night before because he had a seizure and he doesn't know if he could possibly be responsible he doesn't know if somebody just came into the house and murdered her he doesn't know like what the heck happened and so this book is kind of a thriller about him trying to figure out what happened this book is really interesting i think this book is a lot more psychological of a thriller than i was anticipating but like in a really good way this book actually kind of reminded me a lot of you by caroline kepnes because this main character in this book was giving me major like joe goldberg vibes vibes like that is the vibe I was getting from him and I just thought this one was so good um I saw a lot of other Goodreads reviewers say that if you go into this thriller thinking it's gonna be a whodunit you might be disappointed because the whodunit of it gets revealed somewhat early on but you have to go into it thinking it's a why done it not a who done it because learning about why this incident happened in the first place is very interesting and I don't know I thought it was really good I thought it was a good one and then I would also recommend uh Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. This one is definitely more on the scale of like if you just want a fun thriller that will keep you entertained because you know I didn't end up rating this one very high. I gave it like a three out of five stars. It's like it's one of those thrillers that's just an enjoyable time but you have to go in with like pretty low expectations you know but I just had so much fun with this you know like I would definitely still recommend it because we're following this group of people who's going to travel to this island. It's basically like this girl and her boyfriend. They tell these girls that are tourists that they can take them on their boat and these girls are gonna pay them like fifty thousand dollars or something crazy like that so that they can take them on this journey to go and see this island that's kind of like this mysterious spooky island that people just don't really talk about anymore nobody visits there because it's all spooky and weird and has all these like legends and stories about this island and so these four people they go to this island together and then crazy things start happening like just a bunch of shenanigans just crazy shit it doesn't get quite as spooky as you would imagine you know it's more just like drama and things happening between the people <laughs> there but it's also just really fascinating really fun the ending is definitely where this book lost it for me because i was loving it i was absolutely loving it until like the last little sliver and then everything just kind of fell apart for me and i wasn't having fun anymore but i think the vibes in this book are so much fun like if you love kind of like the idea of like being stranded on an island with people that you don't trust and like the isolation like the idea of being on this boat and like there's a storm and like being on an island and I don't know it was just really fun for me um <laughs> this is another kind of like rich people murder vibes too in a way which is fun but yeah I would still recommend this book um just know that the ending is definitely gonna get a little ridiculous and it's not like a top tier thriller but if you just want something that's like a fun time I would I would still definitely recommend this. I do think it's a fun time. <laughs> I also did want to recommend another book that we read for the book troop earlier this year even though I do struggle with calling this one a thriller because it's These Silent Woods and this one as much as I loved this book because you know I really did. I gave it four stars. I would consider this definitely more of like a slow burn mystery than a thriller but I still wanted to include it on this list because I do think fans of thrillers could appreciate this book you know if you go in with the right expectations i think you really could appreciate this book i feel like this uh premise makes it sound a little bit more intense of a story than it actually is you know because it's like no electricity no family no connection to the outside world and then it says you know for eight years cooper and his daughter finch have lived in isolation in this cabin like they're literally living by themselves out in the middle of nowhere they have no connection to the outside world and then it's about how you know his friend jake usually comes once a year and drops off a bunch of supplies for them to get by for the next year but then jake doesn't show up this year and they're like fuck because now it means he's gonna have to go back out into the world and like get 
you know, supplies for them to survive for like the next little bit there. And that's scary for him for reasons that we don't yet understand. <laughs> it's a really good mystery, you know, because for a lot of the book, you're kind of like, okay, like what's going on and like what's gonna happen? And it's definitely a slow burn, but I just really appreciated it. I thought this story was so interesting. I think the ending got a lot more like emotional than I was anticipating. And I just connected so much with these characters that by the end, it just really got to me and made me emotional. And that's why I think I wouldn't, you know, consider this so much of a thrill because there's very few moments in this book that I would call thrilling but it definitely has this good mystery there's like a slow burning mystery happening and it has really good characters like I love these characters and I do love the overall message that this book is trying to put out there I think but yeah if you are curious me and my friend Aaron we did an entire live show for this book in February so if you want to hear all of my thoughts including spoilers um, that live show will be linked down below and then the last book that I wanted to recommend for this is another one that like it's kind of like like take this recommendation with a grain of salt okay because I know that these books aren't very good at least like the writing isn't very good but I still had so much fun reading them that I feel like I want to recommend them anyways because it's the mindfuck series by ST Abby a lot of people do consider this to be more of um you know romantic thrillers it's definitely got a lot of romance in this book okay we're talking very romance heavy if you didn't know this is actually a collection of five books they all the books in this series are about about like a hundred something pages long like they're pretty short so this entire collection is only about 600 pages but it's a collection of five books that are within this series if that makes sense and this series I actually did an entire reading vlog reading all five books in the series earlier this year so if you missed it I'll have that link down below if you want to see you know my experience of reading this book but I will warn you that yes this book is a thriller but it is also heavy on the romance okay especially in the first two books we're talking very heavy romance and in these books we're just following this woman named Lana who she's starting to get in this romance with this detective and she is a serial killer who's going after men who have wronged her and she's killing them one by one and she starts to talk to this guy Logan who is literally the detective on the case of like trying to figure out who the killer is and it's Lana but he doesn't know that and it's just so fascinating okay like the first two books I will say are not that good I would give like the first two books like two stars like I I just thought they were very poorly written and just like the characters were driving me absolutely nuts you know but I felt like the story had potential you know it was really interesting and I could see that this would go in a direction that was probably really good so I stuck it out you know and the books are only about 100 pages so it's not like you're reading for that long you know I guess it compared to other books but oh my gosh by book three and then four and then five oh my gosh this book just gets so intense and like I will say the writing never improves you know like the writing still stays pretty mediocre at best you know we're talking like some poor fan fiction at best very mediocre writing in this series so don't go into this expecting anything great but the characters are pretty good in this series and the places that this book goes like by book five I was just like like jaw hanging open on every single page because I was like what the fuck am I reading right now I also you know as much as I you know thought Lana's character was pretty annoying at the beginning by the end of this series I had a great respect for her you know I just really like she grew on me a lot throughout this series um Logan is probably my least favorite character in this book series still because he's just the most bland generic character I've ever seen but there's a lot of other really great side characters in this book like Jake and Hadley I love Hadley's character so freaking much and I don't know, I just think if you're a fan of thrillers, maybe give these books a shot. You know, they're not gonna be like the greatest writing you've ever seen in your life, but if you just need something that is pure entertainment and fun, you know, I think these books might be for you. But also I will warn you that this book is very dark, especially like once you get to book four, holy shit, it's dark, you know, because there's a lot of trigger warnings for things that are just unimaginable, like really, really tough stuff. So I would definitely look up some trigger warnings if you're, you know, at all concerned about that because there are some very heavy topics being dealt with in this book that were just a lot and I wasn't expecting it to get as dark as it was for how light most of it was. So yeah, anyways, that's my spiel on this book, Mindfuck series. Have you read it? It's wild. Though those are all of the thriller recommendations that I have for you today. That is so crazy that it's been eight months. 
and I can't believe it's been so long, but you know, I was looking at my list at the start of April and I was like, I don't think I have enough to do an entire recommendation video yet. And <laughs> the more thrillers that I was picking up, the more I was like being disappointed by most of what I was reading. So I was finding it really hard to come up with a list of some good thrillers because I've just been reading so much shit lately, but I'm really glad and really happy with this stack. Like I do think this is a really solid stack of recommendations. A lot of these books were five stars for me. Some of them were four stars and we do have a few three stars in there, but I still think the three stars are like fun three stars and like worth your time to read still three stars, if that makes sense. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this video. Let me know if you've read any of these books. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? What would you add to this list? And also, if you didn't know, this is part 10, you know, of a thriller recommendation series that I've been doing on my channel. So if you're looking for some more thriller recommendations, I have nine other videos, literally <laughs> full of recommendations like this. I also did do a video last year that was like my all time favorite thriller recommendations. So I'll also have that video linked down below so you can check that out if you wanna see what some of my all time favorite thrillers are. And yeah, that is all for this video. So thank you so much for watching as always and I will see you very soon with another one. Bye.